everybody, and welcome back to the custom Harley Quinn mallet video series. If you are new here, make sure you check out episodes 1 and 2 of this series first to bring you up to speed and get you ready for where we are jumping in on episode 3 today. This is the point in our build where we reach a fork in the road on what to do next. We could paint the foam and then assemble it at the end, or we could assemble it first and then paint it. Each have pros and cons, so let's take a quick look. The biggest pro of painting first is that it is so much easier to get more detail in the paint job when you just have a foam piece sitting in front of you, instead of having to flip a prop all around to get to the piece you want to paint and like weird angles, stuff in the way, it's just much easier to paint before you attach everything. Cons are that the paint could crack if you bend the foam too much after the paint dries. As for assembling then painting, you get to see the prop coming together sooner, which is always a really exciting part of prop making. And you'd also be painting and priming the foam in its final form, so there's very little risk of the paint cracking. And like I said, the biggest con is that it's just much harder to paint all that detail when the foam is already attached to the mallet. Since I love, love painting details, it's my fave, I like to paint and then assemble. Just keep this con right here in the back of your mind. There are ways to cut back on the chances of your paint cracking, like heat shaping your foam pieces before you paint. That way, your foam is already in the right shape, so paint is covering the surface as close as possible to how it will be in the end. So minimize the need to bend or stretch the paint by pre-shaping your pieces, and using a very flexible primer will help too. Before you paint foam, you always gotta prime it first. Foam is porous, so if you don't prime it, it will drink up all of your paint and you'll have to do 800,000 layers of paint before anything shows up and then it will still crack off. So do yourself a favor and prime your foam, both EVA and craft foam. There are lots of primer options out there and pros and cons to each different kind. Instead of going into all of that in this video, I am going to drop a video link in the description box that I definitely recommend checking out. It is a video by Cosplay Masters, Camelot Cosplay, all about primers with side-by-side -side comparisons of different primers on EVA. It is super helpful and informative, so if you are looking for other alternatives to what we're doing here today, definitely check that video out. My primer of choice today is Plasti Dip. Plasti Dip is definitely on the more expensive side of the group, it'll run you about $6 a can, but the convenience of a spray can plus the flexibility and durability of the rubbery finish is definitely worth it for me. All right, now we are ready for paint, finally. <laughs> for the end caps, I want to do an exposed wood type of paint job, so here's the lineup of colors that I am using. It is an assortment of light beiges, yellow, browns, black, acrylic paints with a matte finish, by the way. For the base color, I'm going for a freshly chopped healthy wood color, which I make by mixing light beige with some yellow. To apply the first coat, I brush the paint on perpendicular to the direction of the carved lines. So since the lines are going this way, I apply the paint in strokes that go this way. This cuts back on accidentally filling all the details that we intentionally carved in there, like filling them up with paint, canceling it all out. If you do get some paint in these deeper recesses though, it's no biggie, but this should stop like tons of paint from pooling in there. And now that our base color is applied, before it dries, I'm going to redirect that base layer to be circular. I'm not adding any more paint here, I'm just using my brush to draw the circular rings of a tree into our paint. The brush strokes add tiny ridges that give you a really subtle texture detail that looks awesome. I know that the paint in our final product looks intimidating and that you might feel like you can't do that, but you definitely can. It's easy if you break it down and follow it one step at a time. The first step is just swirling a bunch of browns. I start by adding rings of a light tan kind of color. Then I add rings of a cinnamon type color. Just imagine this version of our end cap and follow the rings. Finally, I add a more yellowy, khaki kind of color and blend all of these levels of paint. Try not to get any paint into the carved out lines, but it happens, you know. Worry not. We can darken them back up with a wash of watered down black paint. We want to really emphasize those lines that we spent all that time carving in the last episode. 
So to do that, dip your brush into your black paint, then dip it into water, and then run it across your carved out line. The diluted paint is obviously thinner than just straight up acrylic paint, which allows it to run down into all of the deepest little nooks and cracks that we carved out. Then I just wipe away any excess with a paper towel. This is a concept that all you true FX loving zombies are already familiar with whether you realize it or not. It is just like using aqua paints or alcohol activated paint to get down into your zombie scab cracks and your face holes. You guys know. You know. Uh, anyway, now I'm just going to take our lightest beige color and mix it with white to add some highlight rings to the wood. The next thing I do is to start adding a dirty kind of element to this wood. Grab a cosmetic wedge and rip it in half. This should leave it with a rough uneven surface, perfect for stamping on dirt patterns. Stamp on a mix of browns, grays, and black. You can get a little reckless here. I mean, this isn't supposed to look pretty. Get in there and grunge it up. Don't be scared to mix paint. I mean, look at my palette. What is even happening over there? No one knows. I start with lighter shades and then darken up that outer edge more and more as I go. Another way to get this effect, which is actually what I did on the other end cap and liked even better, was to use a paper towel instead of a sponge to stamp on this dirt pattern. I'd just brush on the paint and then dab it with a paper towel to rough the edges up. What you want to do on this end cap is totally up to you. There are so many different options like the X'd out B-Man face, your face here, your head here, the Joker symbol, diamonds. Um, you could do something totally original too. Since we are doing that Glam and Gore logo on the other end cap, I'm sticking with the trusty old your face here for this one. I sketch out the placement of the letters in pencil first and then come back over it with red paint. And hey, it's totally fine to make adjustments as you go. I decided to darken up the outer edge even after I'd already painted the text on there. I make tweaks to my builds until the very end of production, like pretty much every time. So don't feel trapped in what you've made. You can always change things up. For the other end cap, the custom glam and gore side, I just do the same wood painting texture that I did on the first cap. Now grab those fancy little glam and gore lips and hand and all the little individual fingers that we cut out. These should already be primed with Plasti Dip. Now we're just gonna paint them all red, again going perpendicular to the carved lines to avoid filling them with paint. Once that red paint is all dry, we are going to bring back that watered down black paint. You'll see a theme in this paint job that almost all of my dirt and grungy stuff is just watery black or brown paint that has been hit with a paper towel. Get in there and all of those little creases to really showcase all of that texture we put in during the carving stage. Before we can go like full blown dirt and decay paint job, we have to know exactly where these pieces will sit on the end cap. Following my reference photo of Mikey's beautiful logo, I lay out the pieces how I want them and then I go ahead and glue them in place. We will talk a lot more about glue in the glue episode of this build, go figure. But for now, this is contact cement that we are using. Brush it onto the pieces, let them get tacky for a few minutes, stick them where you want them, and hold them for a few while they dry. After I have got all of the logo pieces placed and stuck on there, I stick a heavy book or something on top of them to hold them in place and press them down while the contact cement dries. Give it about 30 minutes or so to make sure that they're really, really on there. While that's drying, let's move on to the wooden boards. These are easy peasy, so let's just knock them out. The wood boards are mostly all the same steps, but let's review. First, make sure it's primed. Then paint your base color, in this case red, perpendicular to the lines that are carved in there. Remember to paint those edges too. Layer until your paint is opaque. You'll also wanna go ahead and paint a layer of black acrylic paint onto your black pieces too. I know this seems crazy, since they're already black from the primer, but this will give them the same matte finish and the same brush strokes that all of the red pieces have. After you finish the one coat of black, you can just set them aside though. Then I go in and start dirtying up the edges by painting on brown paint and dabbing it with a paper towel. Then I use a wash of black acrylic paint and water to accentuate the details in the wood. This time, instead of completely removing the excess black paint, I drag it out to create long streaks that run the length of the board so that it's not just like solid red. 
thin either with the world's tiniest little paintbrush uh, or a toothpick or what I'm using here is a clay dotting tool use black paint to follow along those small wood grain dents that we made with the exacto knife in the last episode now grab your sponge and black paint and stamp on some edge grime and that's about as far as we go with the wooden boards until they are glued onto the mallet. It's hard to know exactly where that final layer of grunge will go until all of the pieces are in place, like the straps and bolts and stuff, so we'll cover the rest of that then. But, spoiler alert, it's just black and brown paint, water, and a paper towel. Shocking, I know. Another thing we can do to kill some time while our contact cement is drying is to prep the base of the mallet. This can be done at any point between episode 1 and episode 5. You just want to make sure that you paint the base of the mallet head black before you start gluing the boards to it. That way, if there are any gaps in how the board connect, it's black inside the gaps instead of cardboardy brown. So now, our Glam and Gore logo should be all dry, so grab your end cap and... Wait, what? Black paint and a paper towel? You don't say. This is becoming a bit of a signature move here, isn't it? <laughs> Honestly, the techniques used in this paint job are so simple and just come together in a really cool way in the end. Literally, all this grunge is is pressing on black paint and then stamping over it with a paper towel. It's totally fine to jump some of this black paint up onto the logo as well to help it blend into this wood piece like it has all been in the same kind of life together. Same weathering, same B-Man face smashes. It is all one. And hey, while you'll want to focus most of the black around the 3D element itself to really make it stand out, feel free to add some grime to the rest of the cap too. Whatever you think it needs to help bring it into the same world. And lastly, the drips of the hand part of the Glam and Glory logo. Is this blood? Is it paint? Is it makeup? I've always thought it was blood, but now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm questioning everything about my existence. Hey Mikey! Curious zombies need answers. Tell us in the comments. What is this goo? So this effect is something I definitely wanted painted on instead of carved in so that I could really sell that drippy effect. With my reference pick nearby, I used a small brush to add drips to the bottom of the hand, the pointer finger, and the thumb. Just like her logo. Also added a little pooling of drippy blood goo underneath the hand just for fun and I think it looks super cool. Okay guys, that is the end of the paint episode where we got most of the painting done. I'd say we're like 88% painted now. But order of operations, you guys. Gotta attach the straps and stuff before we can paint the rest. And speaking of straps, we will make them in the next episode. But not only the straps, we will also make those custom covers for the joints on the handle. Ah, the handle. We haven't seen that in a little while. Okay, I am out of here, you guys. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you soon for episode four straps and covers. See you then. Bye.